the AI TAM for accelerators and data center uh, will be over 500 billion over the next couple of years. The AI investments from the largest hyperscalers are actually pulling, you know, both GPU and CPU revenue, um, you know, which is good uh, for us overall. You know, agentic AI actually requires lots and lots of compute uh, going forward. We're also seeing strength in, um, you know, PCs as well as gaming. In the chaos of quarterly earnings and market volatility, investors often miss the bigger picture. That's exactly what's happening with AMD right now. And no one explains this better than AMD's CEO, Dr. Lisa Su. While analysts dissect temporary margin dips and export licensing delays, Su is focused on a far bigger narrative, one where AMD isn't just a player in the AI hardware space, but a catalyst for the next phase of the AI revolution. Lisa Su's recent interview on Bloomberg wasn't a defensive move, it was a declaration a strategic reveal of how AMD is set to capitalize on one of the largest secular trends in technology, AI inference. She confidently stated, the demand is even stronger than we thought just a few months ago. That's not fluff. That's a CEO with visibility into cloud pipelines, hyperscaler discussions, and enterprise deployments. And she sees the inflection point approaching fast. Let's be clear, Q2 2025 was not a blowout quarter in traditional terms. Revenue rose 32% year-over-year, and gross margins slipped due to an $800 million inventory write-down tied to export restrictions. On the surface, it might appear that AMD underdelivered, but dig deeper and the real story unfolds. AMD is transitioning from chasing cycles to leading them. The MI350, AMD's most powerful AI accelerator to date, launched in late June, too late to reflect in Q2 numbers, but perfectly timed to drive the second half of 2025. And here's where Lisa Su's vision diverges from the market's narrow focus. While Nvidia dominates in training large AI models, Su sees AMD's true strength emerging in inference, the part of the AI lifecycle where trained models are deployed into real-world applications. According to Su, inference workloads are not only growing, they're exploding, with projected growth of 80% per year. This is no longer about high-cost research labs or prototype models. This is about scaling AI to millions of users, billions of devices, and trillions of decisions across finance, healthcare, cloud, telecom, defense, and more. Sue made a bold claim. The AI data center accelerator market is heading toward a $500 billion TAM, and AMD is positioned to capture a meaningful slice of it. In her words, we expect to get a large portion of that new accelerator TAM and that's how we get to tens of billions of dollars. This is a roadmap grounded in execution, not ambition. AMD is now on an annual cadence, with its next-gen MI400 already in development, designed to offer full rack-level solutions, a direct challenge to NVIDIA's vertical AI stacks. Yet Wall Street remains skeptical. Why? Because AMD isn't NVIDIA. The market is impatient. It wants AMD to match NVIDIA's revenue today, its margins yesterday, and its valuation tomorrow. But that's not the real game. Lisa Su isn't playing catch-up. She's building a different kind of platform, one that focuses on performance per dollar, efficiency per watt, and total cost of ownership. And that's exactly what cloud providers and enterprises are asking for. AMD's MI355 delivers up to 40% more tokens per dollar than NVIDIA's B200 in inference workloads. That's not a small edge. It's a game-changer in environments where cost and scalability matter more than absolute top-end performance. And if AI inference is truly entering a hyper-growth phase, as Sue believes, then AMD is in the perfect position. Underpriced, underestimated, and now armed with the silicon to compete. To understand why this matters, consider the macroeconomic context. Interest rates are expected to fall in 2026. Inflation is cooling. The Nasdaq has rallied but it's clear that investors are now looking beyond the Magnificent Seven. As capital rotates toward the next layer of innovation leaders, AMD is at the intersection of multiple themes. AI infrastructure, semiconductor supply chain realignment, hyperscaler optimization, and sovereign computing initiatives. AMD is also quietly gaining ground in markets that aren't making headlines. Sue noted in her interview that AMD is seeing robust growth in PCs and gaming, Segments the market largely wrote off last year. Yet AMD's consumer and commercial offerings are well-positioned and gaining traction. Even the embedded segment, long considered a slower growth division, is poised to return to growth in the second half of 2025. This isn't just about AI, 
It's about a diversified, resilient growth engine firing on multiple cylinders. Then there's China. Lisa Su was transparent about the challenges and the progress. Just 90 days ago, AMD didn't expect to ship certain high-performance products to China at all. Today, multiple export licenses are under review by the U.S. government. Su confirmed that the Department of Commerce is actively engaging, trying to balance national security with global tech leadership. While AMD excluded China-related revenue from its Q3 guidance to stay conservative, there's clear upside if even a portion of those licenses get approved. And make no mistake, the demand in China hasn't disappeared. It's simply waiting. For investors, this creates an intriguing setup. Conservative guidance, depressed sentiment, misunderstood product roadmap, and a multi-year TAM expansion, all converging. The MI350's full revenue impact will begin to show in Q3 and Q4. China licensing could unlock hundreds of millions in backlogged inventory. The MI400 launch next year will keep AMD's roadmap competitive and consistent, and AMD's total addressable market in A, I will keep expanding as inference workloads scale across the enterprise. Let's also talk risk, because no investment thesis is complete without acknowledging it. AMD's core risk today is execution, specifically, whether the MI350 series can gain commercial traction against NVIDIA's dominance. The early benchmarks are promising, but the real test is customer adoption. If AMD secures design wins, hyperscaler endorsements, and large-scale cloud deployments, then its revenue inflection becomes a matter of when, not if. On the other hand, if uptake is slower than expected, the bull case will take longer to materialize. But that's where the asymmetry comes in. For NVIDIA to deliver a 6x return from here, it needs to grow into a $24 trillion company. Doable? Maybe. But for AMD, the same 6x upside only requires continued execution and a slice of the AI boom. With its valuation still trailing far behind NVIDIA's, AMD offers a more favorable risk-reward profile for long-term investors. And perhaps most importantly, AMD is building trust, not just with Wall Street, but with partners. Lisa Su emphasized AMD's reputation for consistent execution, a track record that hyperscalers and enterprise customers value immensely. In a world where AI chips are often delivered late, overhyped, or undersupported, reliability becomes a strategic asset. AMD's commitment to annual product releases and deep ecosystem integration is part of what makes it an attractive NVIDIA alternative. As we head into the latter half of 2025, Lisa Su's interview should be viewed not as a recap of past performance, but as a preview of what's coming. The real AI battle is just beginning, and it won't be won by who trained the largest model in 2023. It will be won by who can deploy AI infrastructure at scale, economically, and globally. And if Sue's roadmap holds true, AMD will not only be part of that future, it may very well be engineering it. For investors willing to look past the noise and focus on execution, roadmap clarity, and long-term positioning, AMD offers something rare in today's market. Undervalued conviction backed by visionary leadership. Wall Street might be sleeping on AMD. Lisa Sue isn't. And neither should you.